Right, it's going to be clear tonight. Um, what shall I image? What should I image tonight? Oh, pencil. Let's do the pencil nebula. So the pencil nebula, also known as NGC 2736, is a small part of the Vela supernova remnant. Now, somewhere around, I think, about 11,000 years ago, um, the, the star that created the Vela supernova remnant exploded. And um, basically, the pencil nebula is formed by the shock wave coming out and, and heading into the gas um, to create the shape. Now, it was discovered, uh, I think, about around 1840s or so, and uh, got its name because of this sort of linear shape, not because it looks obviously like a pencil, but more that it's got that sort of linear shape, so that's how it's, it's got its name. It's about 815 light years away, and um, so tonight I'll be shooting it with the Skywatcher Esprit 120. Now some of you may have seen the image that I did of the pencil nebula region with the Ascar as a first light. That was a fairly quick um, image just to get a first light out and certainly didn't spend an, enough time on it to pick up all the nice filamentous sort of look to the oxygen 3 that is uh, around and part of the pencil nebula. So I'm going to spend a lot more time on it with a sky watcher. Uh, there's some HA as well. Um, some of that is in the background and also shows up in the sort of central part of the of the pencil nebula. So I'll be doing some HA first while the moon's up which is over there, and uh, then as it goes down I'll um, switch back to some O3 and I'm hoping to get about, um, I don't know, 20 hours if I can on this target, we'll see. It's supposed to be clear all night so I'm hoping that I get a few more hours on this um, before it gets too low in the sky for the rest of the year. So fingers crossed it stays clear all night and uh, it's going to get a little bit colder now. We are heading into autumn so I think it's going to get down to about 11 degrees. Uh, which isn't that cold um, compared to midwinter, but is a bit chilly compared to the temperatures we've had um, so far in summer. So it, it should make for a nice clear night. Okay, so this is uh, Command Central, and I've got uh, the two monitors looking at um, both setups. So over here we've got the Sky Watcher, and that's out in the observatory. And over here is the Ascar 65PHQ, and that is on the deck. Now I'm running um, AnyDesk, so I can actually keep an eye on these rigs from from here. And also I've got it running out on the um, in the observatory and also I can just use the iPads if I'm in watching TV or whatever so uh, it's really quite a useful program you can run multiple uh, versions of your of your setup on multiple devices all at the same time which um, I think on some platforms you can't but anyway this has been working really well so time to get things started I think okay so things have just kicked off on the Sky Watcher, so it has uh, slewed to the target. Um, it's not going to do a uh, rotation because it's still in the same orientation that it was at um, when I got managed to image a bit last night. I was just trying to collect a few RGB stars. So, um, but I'm going to start off here with HA on the pencil nebula. You can just see it um, over here. Uh, it should move it into place a bit better. Okay, that seems to be in the right place. You can just very faintly see it here um, in the luminance, but uh, we'll get this um, switching over to, it should go over to the HA filter and then start uh, doing a focus, which it has done here. So I'll let that run and then uh, it can start taking the 10 minute exposures. Okay, just while it's doing its first exposure, it's only a minute 50 in on its first uh, 10 minute exposure. 
The guiding was looking really good here. It was about 0 0.44, 0 0.45, and you can see it's jumped up to 0.73 because of this. And um, this here is a bus going past um, outside on the street and shaking the observatory around. So the buses um, have been a bit frequent recently <laughs> and they seem to be sending a lot of them down our street. And so it's not good when you've got a 10 minute exposure and this sort of thing happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop this and I'm going to restart it. And uh, hopefully the next bus is longer than 10 minutes, 10 minutes away. So you can see there's a big difference when there's no buses going past. Um, it's guiding at about 0.39, which is good. Um, not a huge number of stars uh, visible through the OAG, but enough. Okay, first image is coming in, and there it is there. There is a little bit of a satellite run through here, but this is the sort of HA part of the pencil nebula. There is a lot more in the oxygen uh, O3, and there's a little bit in the background here as well. So, um, but uh, that's looking okay. The stars are looking good, nice and round. No buses have gone past. I think that's faint enough that that should be able to uh, calibrate out with all the stacking. So, yep, we will just carry on collecting HA until the moon goes a bit lower, and then I can switch to O3. Right, we'll have to say, um, for a change, it's been nice to be able to get a decent amount of integration time on a target. I think I got about 25 hours on the Pencil Nebula. Uh, up until recently, um, you know, any integration time I've had on a target has been pretty short uh, due to the weather. But we've actually recently had a, a quite a string of clear nights, um, and some of them being clear right through to dawn. So I've been able to image all night, which has been brilliant. Um, and uh, means that you can actually get a decent amount of data. Now I'll just shrink myself down here and just show you what I was um, capturing. So this, I was doing 10 minute exposures on the uh, pencil nebula and um, you know you can see the pencil part, or well, pencil nebula itself here quite uh, reasonably well and all the little sort of um, filaments that make it up. But there's not a lot of detail going on out here, and I know there is a lot of O3 out here. Um, you can get a bit of a hint, I'm hoping this will show up on YouTube, of some of the sort of little filaments running around here. But I'm always amazed by the fact that if you, you know, collect enough data and you stack all this, um, then this is what you end up with, and this is 13 hours of O3, and suddenly all this very faint stuff on a single 10 minute exposure, so these aren't like three or four minute exposures, these are 10 minutes, um, end up giving you with all this nice rich detail, which was great. Now the HA, similar um, similar situation, again you can see the pencil nebula here, not a lot going on out here, and certainly not the kind of exciting image you see if you do a three or four minute exposure of the Rosette Nebula, this is again 10 minutes of um, HA, and this is the small amount of uh, what appears to be in your image, but once again you stack it, and this is about 10 hours worth, suddenly a lot more HA um, is is present. I didn't bother with S2 because I knew that I wasn't, when I did my imaging with the ASCAR, I was only picking up a little bit of, of S2 in the middle of the pencil here, and um, you know that was all being picked up pretty much by the O3 and the HA anyway, so there was nothing else out here. So I decided to make this an HOO image. I did a couple of goes one here where I stretch the HA um, a bit more but it tended to encroach a bit on the O3 signal so this is what I sort of settled on. Um, it, it looks like this when you first um, combine it with a lot of the green there but then you just apply the SCNR tool set on green to get the nice um, blue uh, and then it was a matter of just working on this. No, it didn't require too much more effort to be honest with you um, but just to sort of reduce the noise and um, really sort of bring this blue out, bring out the contrast a bit more. Um, I also did a luminance, which I applied later on just from the O3 signal here. And uh, then I also did um, 30 second exposures, RGB stars. So this is just the blue, I won't show you the others, it's somewhat similar. And um, I needed 30 second exposures because I didn't want to oversaturate on the stars and end up just end up with white stars. So um, they were just 30 second exposures. Um, and this is, as I said, about 35 minutes stacked. 
and uh, ended up with this, um, with a stack. You can see the stars are quite purple and green, but then it's a matter of just going through. Now, one thing I went through and I did, this is just if I come out of here, this is, um, I don't know if I've applied it yet, let's have a look. Um, yes, yeah, so I did an arc sign stretch, um, which is just brings out a little bit more of the color without um, blowing out the stars. And I think any of you who have been watching uh, James from the DSO Imager uh, and his channel, um, you'll you'll see he's been using the arc sign stretch quite a lot with great results. So then I just went ahead and then did um, histogram stretch um, to this point, but my stars were still very purple and green. So I just did a, uh, if we go to script and utilities and correct magenta stars, and basically that just, uh, if I just zoom in here, particularly on this star, hit an invert and you can see it's very, very green. Um, and then you, uh, it applies the SCNR tool and removes that green and then inverts it back again. You get much more sort of an orange looking star. Down here, these are green. So again, it's just a matter of applying the SCNR tool set to green and um, sort of remove that green. And then just worked a bit further on them. I extracted the stars from this um, uh, image here and then just worked a bit more on the color, the saturation, etc. And then um, combine it back with the starless image. So um, I'll, I'll show you my final image of the Pencil Nebula, which is uh, about, as I said, 25 hours exposure. Um, uh, I've got a few other projects in the works because we've had these long clear nights. I've been able to switch to a target halfway through the night and image there. So I'm collecting more data on those. Once we get back to some clear nights, we've got a bit of rain at the moment, but I think I've got another clear night coming up uh, about Wednesday. Uh, tonight we fall back, so we actually lose daylight savings. So I'll be able to image a bit earlier in the evening. Naturally, um, sunrise will occur earlier as well. But um, as we head into the winter months, there'll be longer periods to, uh, to image. So I'm hoping to actually be able to do some targets with some decent integration time. Anyway, I'll leave you with my image of the Pencil Nebula, uh, about 25 hours worth. And um, look, I hope everybody is getting lots and lots of clear skies. Um, I'm hoping that we continue to get some more clear skies. Um, and until next time, um, here is my uh, image of the Pencil Nebula. <laughs>